In this video, I'm gonna water fill some of my waders. Oh wow. See how they do. There is a lot to take care of here. And uh, I'm gonna tell you everything about how I stay dry during fishing and how to extend the life of your waders. They are an expensive piece of gear that is so essential for you to have a nice time at the water. And over the years of being a guide and wearing and tearing many pieces of waders, I have some advice that I would like to give you to you. Mistakes I've done over the years and uh, yeah, how to make them work again. So let's get into it. To, to explain something just before we get into this, not all of these waders are mine that I use. A couple of them are rental waders. We are out here in Schoenerk right now. And yeah, I just picked some of them out to just see how they are, if they're leaking or not. But in the end of the video, I will water fill probably what is most interesting is one of my own waders that I know leak. I've been using them for a, quite a good time and there is a leak in them for sure. So stay around for that one. <laughs> I'm quite curious about how bad it is actually is. The two ways that I repair waders is with either UV resin. I use the Gulf Flexman. What is good with UV resin is that you can use it directly on wet waders so when you water fill them you if you have a small small leak you can just repair it with the uv resin right away the way i do it is just I put out a drop smear it out and it's done for the severe holes and like here there is a visible uh, hole that i'm i repaired it is a burnt hole straight through here i use the gulf wader repair uh, this one, Aquafix. So I just let the waders dry first. I smear it on plenty. It's quite thick. After just an hour like this, it's dry to the touch, but it needs 12 to 24 hours to cure properly. So if it is a good leak, I do this on both sides. My favorite way of testing the waders is to water fill them. Here I'm using a 10 liter bucket and I think that's more than enough to just get a good idea if they're leaking or not. The problem if, is if you completely water fill them, they get so heavy. Oh, that's heavy. With this small bucket, you just squeeze the water to the different areas that you inspect for the moment. So this way I can go through the waders. It takes a little bit of a longer time, but it's so much easier to handle on your own. Like I am now here out in Schoenerk. You see that one? Here you have a dot that barely, there is no water going through really. It just gets dark. It's not, it's so little. So it's enough with just a little bit of UV resin right there. And then it's sealed. It will be a dark spot here. The waiter is gonna be dark anyways when they're wet and they're made for use, so I don't care that it's like that. Right now we're checking a pair of uh, rental waders. It's a small, it's a brown, very easy to see if there's a leak. Always begin at the foot. Check upwards. And will hopefully come to some bigger leak because this is seriously used. Checking the ass area simply just by holding up the legs, seeing if there is anything here. Oh, yeah, here we have something. This is, let's see, where is it? It is on, uh, yeah, on the knee, very typical. You see, as we speak, there is a drop that is being created here and this is if you would have a lot of clothes on you i don't think you would feel directly with this kind of leakage even when water is like you vis visually can see that water comes through it is on the edge that you will actually feel it if there is a leak that you when you walk out in the water and feel like oh, oh this is then it is more than this i can tell you the benefit of doing this every now and then is that you will find the holes that you not obviously feel right away. Don't use your waders until they are in those, that scenario that you, oh, this is a lot of water coming in. 
but you, because you might have holes like this. You are a bit soaked when you come home. If, if it's a cold day, you know you, your, way, your clothes underneath will get soaked and you will get cold. It's not an obvious leak, but having this fixed, it is so easy. And if you do it every now and then, it will not be like a nightmare when you finally check them. Because when you have worn your waders for 100 days or so, there will be poke holes all over. So if you do it after 20 days, after 40 days, and after 60 days, 80 days, and 100 days, do some small fixes here and there. It doesn't have to be big holes to be annoying for you. What I'm gonna do with this uh, hole is that my method is not the nicest for how it looks, but it is effective to find the smallest holes. And, and just do a small dot like that with a pen. So, a small dot. So when it dries, I can find it again. I maybe even do a, a video like this. I take up my phone, I film. So, okay, this is the Scout model waders. And I could only find one hole on it, and it's at the knees. I just record this lazy video. It's, it doesn't have to be nice, but when the waders have been drying out for like a couple of days, it can be hard to find these small, small markings. So when you have, then if you look at that video, oh yeah, there was only one hole in this and it should be on the right knee. So you can check there and you find it. That's how I do it. Now we have made it to one of the waders I look forward the most to test. These are the, my personal waders that I have brought here this summer. And I've used them for yeah, pretty much the whole season. This has been my main pair. And I haven't tested them. I know there should be a leak. So lately I haven't used them. I put them to dry. And this was the, the entire reason why I do this video is because I wanted to test these waders. So I'm gonna take you a little bit closer. I'm gonna go through this. Inspecting the sock. Doing fine. Folding down here. This is the most typical place to have leaks if uh, you do a lot of walking in the in the bushes. And here you can see. Whoa! <laughs> there is. Oh wow! There is a lot to take care of here. Have a look at this. Microscopic holes. It's so tiny. This is no way I, I would feel at all when waiting. And it's so extremely little, so I don't know if I should take care of this. But this is the, uh, the clearly bushes that are doing this mess. So this is UV resin. And the reason why you haven't seen me use any UV lamp today is because, yeah, even already now it has been cured. During a cloud, cloudy day like this, it takes about a minute for it to, to cure. You could not do this in sunshine, it would just cure too fast. So best thing is to do it inside, having um, all the time you need, and then either use the UV lamp or take it out into the sun. Now I've done lots of repairs here with the UV resin and it will probably keep my legs a bit more dry in the future. And this is, yeah, a lot. You, if you would done this on the inside, it would have looked a lot nicer. Uh, but I don't find a way to be more precise than this. Uh, there is a video on Sims YouTube channel, how they use uh, a spray on the inside and can see where the holes are. I haven't tried that method uh, and I don't know if these small holes will, will show.
but yeah, there's a lot of repairs. And now they will still work fine, but they're getting quite worn as you see. I have used this a lot. Look at just how the seams are worn and the material in the gravel guards. There is big holes here. It's a lot of wear and tear on these, so I'll guess that these have been with me for guiding maybe 70 days or so. That's uh, a lot tougher than just to being out fishing because I carry stuff, I walk back and forth between the guests and, and so on. But here we come to the serious leak, I think. This leak I could actually feel. See there's drip drops being created. It was not an instant thing I could feel, but um, after a couple of hours, it was so obvious on the knee that something was not right. But what's interesting is that even on, even on these waders that are so used, on the backside, there is nothing. Not a single thing compared to the front where there was so many. So it is the bushes very often, like rose bushes or any other kind of bush that is sharp. Try to not go through them. It will save you waders so much. So when I started to be more careful that, with that, you can't always do it. So there, will, there, there can be small holes being created, but when you can prevent it, it is so worth it. If I could say something to the manufacturers of waders, it is that the gravel guards, yes, they do the perfect job. They take a lot of wear and tear here and they prevent the gravel to go inside the boots. But if the double layer, because there is a double layer, your print sock, if it could go a bit higher to just be a double layer over this most weird area here in the front, that would be amazing, I feel. It would make my waders last much longer. Inspecting your waders inside out will not make it, it is, I feel it's more difficult to spot the right, the right area. You cannot really see this, the tiniest holes if you want to find them. <laughs> the advantage with doing this way, of course, after you're done here, you can just empty the waders, turn them the other way around, then you can start using them again. When having only one pair of waders, you need to use them the next day or so. This is the way I would recommend. But it is harder to spot the holes. When you find a hole, you don't have to be so pretty because it's on the inside. So. That's the convenient part. Here, Here you have a hole that you can definitely feel right next to the seam. It's water really dripping down here. I was shocked about how many big holes there were in these. I knew they were leaking, but I had no idea it was this much. So I will probably put some resin on the mark spot from the inside on these. And then I once again water fill them from the other way around and see more in detail where there is some uh, still leaks and I can fix them from the outside. So it will probably take a two step procedure in fixing these waders. So when emptying these of water, the ones that I had uh, filled inside out, you can see this is simulating how it would be after a fishing day. The, the waders are really wet on the outside and perhaps there is some water on the inside as well. In this scenario, it is really important what you do next with these waders until your next fishing time. So if you would put, them, put away them for storage or hang them up over the night, it is so important that they actually dry because the, the fabric itself dries quite quickly but what will hold water for a longer time is the seams with the tape. Here you have the stitched seam and it's also taped on the inside and this area will take the longest to dry and if the waders are not drying fast enough they can be starting to be mold created inside the seams most likely or like down in the socks of the waders it takes a lot of time to dry as well to get your waders dry as quickly as you can 
is actually very important. Hang them up in a warm, warm place, like I do in room temperature. You should not, not put it up in a sauna or like a, a, a room that is really, really hot, because that would instead damage your waders. So the tape will be, maybe, the tape will maybe have problems that it will fall off or so, and that you don't want. But uh, yeah, black mold, as I've heard, black mold can also be a, a big reason why seams start to leak, because when mold is being created inside the seams, it, the water can start to creep through there. This is how you can see my ass is doing when it comes to taking in water. There's a big mark here. There's some small dots here and there and there and there. This one, it's not any water drops being created, but it is this clear that you can see the leaks. So I have decided what I will do with these waders now. It is a big leak on the knee. It is this one that is sort of big and perhaps like that one. So there is three major leaks and a lot, a lot, like hundreds of small poke holes. Will I stop using these? No, but this is not gonna be the, the waders that I go out on the Gotland coast line with in freezing cold temperatures. I will most likely leave these waders here in Schoenerk for the summer fishing, like when it's warm outside, I can absolutely have these waders still for probably another 50 days of guiding without any problems and can continue to fix the bigger holes. So like for summer fishing or during, like doing even after those 50 days, you can still use them for like, if you do long hikes or so, that is a terrible tear on the waders and you don't have so much wading during that day. It's perfect to use these waders that are still keeping you almost dry. They breathe well <laughs> because they have poke holes. Oh, but I, to take a perfectly new pair of expensive waders on a tough hike through bushes, that's a nightmare. Then it will shorten the lifespan of those waders for so long. So to have these uh, waders that do different tasks, I think it's perfect. And you can even like mark on the inside. I usually write a little novel here on the inside of the waders, like um, summer waders, I will call them or something. So I know that they are not great anymore. <laughs> so yeah. I have lots of waders and you should too. So let me down in the comments, give it a try, fill them up with water and, and see what happens. Curious to, to hear what, uh, if you find holes that you didn't know about, most likely there is some. <laughs>